Welcome to this Red Hat Whiteboard Consulting video. I'm Will McKinley, an architect with Red Hat Consulting. And I'm Daniel Vasikran. I'm an application development consultant with Red Hat Consulting as well. And today we're here to talk about Red Hat OpenShift Service Mesh. That's right. Let's take it away. Okay. So I have a client who has a monolithic application that he'd like to deploy to OpenShift, um, but he'd also like to break it apart. And so as he's looking at you know, all the inter-service communication, because some of the services won't actually be public-facing APIs, it'll be more like shared libraries that are, that are talking in the back end, that that's going to be a lot to manage. Um, and, and also, he had a performance problem that he was looking at for the last week, and you know, it took him a long time to track it down. So do you have any advice for him? Yeah, so microservices rely heavily on the network to communicate with each other. Uh, so the more complicated your microservices get, the more complicated the traffic management between your microservices get. But we have a tool in mind that will help you gain some more transparency for the communication going through your microservices. Yeah. Um, so OpenShift Service Mesh really helps manage you, your entire service suite. Um, and it can help give you some visibility into those performance problems, whether they might be inside of your services or maybe an external bottleneck. That's right. The OpenShift Service Mesh is the connective tissue that brings your microservices together. It provides complex traffic management like load balancing and service discoverability without being too intrusive. Um, so Daniel, what can you tell us about how this mesh handles inter-service communication? So the OpenShift Service Mesh uses a control plane management with a sidecar proxy install to manage all the traffic going through your microservices here. This makes the control plane very unintrusive and your services can be blissfully unaware of any of the traffic management issues. And there's also a tool called Kiali, which gives you a dashboard view into your request routing, um, and it can give you detailed analysis on you know, how long it took to go from one hop to the next, and so you can really see those, those bottlenecks. So let me throw a scenario at you here. Um, imagine you were developing a new version of one of your services, and you wanted to experiment with it. You just wanted to try it out but you weren't quite ready to commit to the new version, how could OpenShift Server Smash help you experiment? Well, there's a feature called uh, Canary Deployments. So let's say you had service, v, uh, service B here, and you wanted to deploy version 2.0 of Service B. Uh, through Canary Deployments, you can deploy this and just route a small amount of traffic, let's say 10%, to this new version while the bulk of your traffic is still going to the existing version so that you don't interrupt the flow of traffic for your users. And as you see you know, that this is going to survive, you can divert all the traffic over to version 2.0 and terminate version 1. What if one of your ser services was just completely down? Well, in that case, uh, let's say service C became unresponsive here. Uh, there's a feature called circuit breaking which allows it to the mesh to short circuit that request so that your users aren't hopelessly waiting on an answer. And you're not wasting resources trying to ping a service that's completely down. That's right. Um, so, Daniel, what can you tell us about how the mesh can provide some view on tracing your messages through, through the mesh? And then also a little bit about security. Yeah, so the OpenShift service mesh leverages a tool called Jaeger to provide distributed tracing throughout your network. Uh, it also combines with the Kiali dashboard to give you a nice visual chart of where your requests are coming and going. As far as security goes, all the requests coming into the, op uh, into the service mesh are encrypted use using TLS, mutual TLS. So everything coming and going is secure. Yeah, and you know, I think the beauty about using something like OpenShift Service Mesh is that the application developer can really just focus on their business logic because a lot of the heavy lifting is done by the mesh. So how does all this work, Will? Well, it's divided into two planes. On the bottom, you have the control plane, uh, and at the top, there's the data plane. And in the data plane is really where your sidecar proxy installs go into your containers so that it's managing all the traffic inbound and outbound throughout the mesh. The control plane handles the configuration and policies that make the service mesh works. It's comprised of four major parts, um, the mixer, the citadel, the galley, and the pilot. So your galley is where, really where your configuration data is, is stored, and that gets pushed both to the mixer and pilot. Pilot is the orchestrator of the mesh, so that when you see the pods come online and offline throughout the mesh, it's going to update all the routing tables accordingly. 
The Mixer handles usage policies for your data plane, so it can do things like apply rate limiting rules. It also gives you visibility on the metrics of the kind of traffic going through your service mesh. And lastly, there's the Citadel, which is your certificate management uh, component. So you want security through your mesh, uh, you need certificates throughout the mesh as well. So that's a lot of information. Where can people go to find out more about the OpenShift Service Mesh? Well, you can go to redhat.com slash services or talk to your Red Hat account executive to get a conversation started. Thank you for watching. Stay on the lookout for more Red Hat Consulting whiteboard videos.